Matthew 16 this is a real wake-up call, right? He says, for what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? See, when we make the wrong choices and we take the little shortcuts and I can only just, you know, reflect it from the world that I've lived in, in, in the work world. And, you know, they're, they're usually in that gray zone where they're asking you to do something that you know is wrong, but it's not technically in the rule book that, that they can't catch you and, and, and arrest you to do it. Like arrest, you know what I mean? Like fire you because you, you didn't follow protocol. They, it seems to me at least like they purposely write the rules to give you a little wiggle room. And, you know, as a Christian... You don't have wiggle room. Let, let your yes be yes and your no be maybe. <laughs> That's not what it says. We believe there's such a thing as truth, absolute truth, and I'm going to try to do it as much as I can. In fact, the name of Holy Spirit, one of his names, the Spirit of Truth, lives inside of you. So if I'm lying, guess what? That's the forever loser spirit, not the forever winner spirit. Which one do you want? <laughs> That's a pretty easy choice. Oh, man, I, I gained worldly goods, but what did I do? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? I sold out my soul in order to go along with the program, and now they can use that evidence against me anytime they choose to, uh, to fire me. In fact, I signed a deal that I didn't fully read that said they didn't even need a cause to fire me. They could just fire me without cause. That's, that was the right. You better read the fine print before you just join that company. And this is the way it says it in the voice translation. You know I'm a fan of the voice. It says, there are two paths before you. You may only take one path. Can you tell the person next to you that? They might not have known that today. <laughs> There's two paths. You can only take one. See, I'm good with math. <laughs> one doorway is narrow and one door is wide. Go through the narrow door. Oh, really? Okay, I will. For the wide door leads to a wide, easy path. The easy path has many, many people on it. But the easy, crowded path leads to death. Oh, well, that sounds like the devil in the garden. Did God say that you would die if you ate that fruit? You surely will not die. And you know what? They didn't die, did they? What did Isaac Petra say? What died? Their spirit died. It brought death into the kingdom. Death had never existed in the kingdom. So their, their willingness to disobey caused them to lose the blessing of obedience. That, ever, that has never changed. We get blessed in obedience. Even if in the short run, you get run through the ringer. I'm drawn to the book of Acts often. I hope you are too, because that's that transition between Jesus ministry and the birth of the church and you know we live in a culture right now where there's more hurting people emotionally hurting people than at any time in my life and that means there's a lot of opportunities to talk to people about the Lord do it in a non-religious way but but make sure that there's that they're hearing from you a message of hope that no matter what they're dealing with, God is not surprised and has an answer to get them out of that. Amen? Believe that? So let's just look at what it says. In, in Acts 2.21, it says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you say that? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'll go another step and say, Paul wasn't even calling on the name of the Lord. And the Lord just knocked him down on the road and said, I want to talk to you, son. The road to Damascus, right? So even if you don't call on him sometimes, he'll just say, hi, you're on candid camera. It's your turn. But anybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So the, the culture tells us to, to hold shame in, not to admit it, to get more likes on social media, all those things. The Lord is saying, no, just be honest and recognize that if you're trying to live your life without me, you can't succeed the same way you can if you invite me in. Right? So well, you, the non-believer might say, well, not everybody's Christians and there's plenty of happy people out there that are married and have jobs. Well, everybody here is, is ready to tell you that any person on the planet would be better off accepting Jesus than not. No matter how good it looks like they're doing right now, they're going to do better with Jesus. And there's a judgment day coming, by the way. There's a day coming where we're all going to have to give an account to the Lord for how we lived our lives. 
And we want to be able to say, I humbled myself. I recognize I couldn't do it without you. Life is very humbling, isn't it? So in verse 32, this Jesus, this is Peter speaking, this Jesus who has been raised up, who God has raised up from the dead, of which we are all witnesses, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this Spirit which you now see and hear. How many here are filled with the Holy Spirit? All right. Wasn't it a game changer in your life? Make some noise if it was a game changer. Right? So basically you can't say yes to the Lord without the Holy Spirit. It's He's the one in there. But when you say yes, Holy Spirit engulfs you. You get baptized. You get submerged in His presence. Let me tell you, who wouldn't want that? Somebody who's so ashamed and so afraid that God would judge them and punish them. We're here to tell you, no. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter what heinous crime or sin that you've committed. Paul was a murderer. And God said, you're in. I have an assignment for you. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin. And, and that's really the ultimate choice anybody can make is to say yes to God and no to the world. I've been trying the world and it's a mess. That's what me and Trisha said separately. We didn't know each other. She got saved before I did, but it was like, well, what I'm doing isn't working too good, so I might as well try you. But I don't want you to wait till that happens. I want you to just say yes now. Let me tell you, there's a bunch of people here that will back you up big time that it's the best decision that you could ever make. It's humbling. You have to repent and say, I'm sorry for the things I did wrong. But man, on the other side of that equation, you feel the love of God. True church, you feel the acceptance of God that you have been forgiven and that you're now empowered by this Holy Spirit and the truth of his word to live a different life, to go forward, broken addictions off, no more slavery to sin, but now a bond servant of the Lord. So if that's you, you're not a Christian and you wanna say yes, all you have to do is just raise your hand and say, you know what, I heard enough. I want to call out on the name of the Lord and I want to be saved. And if everybody here is a Christian, start bringing some non-Christians to church with you. Amen? Anybody watching online that doesn't know the Lord? Lift your hand. God sees it. You're never alone. God sees it. If you've got some kind of addiction in your life, that could bring so much shame when, you're, when you know you're a Christian and there's something controlling you that... You should be saying, man, I should be doing better than this by now. No, it's okay. Humble yourself. Just ask for help. Say, Lord, help me with this. Take this burden off my shoulder. Take this weight off of me right now. Soul ties with some ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. He can break all of that off of you because there's power in his name. There's power in the blood. There's power in Jesus Christ. He wants us all to flourish and prosper. So... I'll just speak a blessing over all of you right now. We will have a prayer ministry team at the altar here today. There's wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. You came in one way, you should leave a different way. If there's weight, weights that are holding you back, release them at the altar today. Come up and get people to agree with you in prayer that that thing is not going to latch on to me any longer. And can we just make a confession? I will. Choose the narrow gate that leads to life. 